It's been a bleak record-setting 24 hours nationwide with new highs in COVID case counts, hospitalizations, and deaths across the country. And here in Massachusetts, we shattered our daily record for the second day in a row with more than 6,400 new confirmed cases today. Overall, the state's positive test average has climbed to nearly 5%, up from less than 2% a month ago. And if you ignore tests from colleges and universities where students and staff are tested regularly, the positivity rate is even higher at almost 7% on average. So the report from ABC should come as no big surprise that the White House Coronavirus Task Force has advised the state to, quote, consider rolling back a step in the state reopening plan as a whole. But at a press conference today, Governor Charlie Baker reiterated he is not ready to take that step just yet. What we want to see is what the next few days look like. This is going to be a constant balancing act uh, for us here in Massachusetts, and we get that. We're going to continue to talk to the health care folks and continue to rely on, on their guidance about what we need to do to support them. Baker made that statement from a field hospital at the DCU Center in Worcester, which will start accepting patients again this weekend due to the surge. He says a second field hospital will be coming in Lowell in the weeks ahead. The governor also announced today that he expects the state will get 300,000 doses of COVID vaccine by year's end, and he'll be filing the state's final distribution plan with the federal government tomorrow. When asked for details on that this morning, he declined to give them, offering just these general thoughts. I think it's reasonable for me to say today that healthcare workers and long-term care folks are absolutely going to be up near the top of the list. Based on the feedback we've gotten from the federal government, we expect and admittedly, you know, we'll see how this all plays out. The beginning of this will probably be a little lumpy. So how lumpy are we talking? I'm joined by Michael Curry's in the governor's COVID vaccine advisory group, along with two other state advisory groups focusing on health and coronavirus equity. It's also the incoming president and CEO of the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers. Unless you think those aren't credits enough, he's also chair of the National NAACP Advocacy and Policy Committee. Michael, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Good to be back with you, Jim. So the feds a couple of days ago put frontline health care workers and residents and staff of long-term care facilities at the top of the list. The state seems to be doing the same. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I think, you know, we got guidance from the advisory committee to the CDC. I think Massachusetts, like all states, will be able to do its own thing based on that guidance. We're not bound to that guidance. Uh, so the governor, to his credit, Governor Baker, put together his working group. And that working group led by Paul Bittinger uh, from Mass General Brigham's and a whole group of just really smart people who care about uh, the communities that, that I get to serve in both capacities, civil rights and in the Mass League uh, role, uh, were top of mind for the folks on that task force. Well, you say that, but people of color, we all know, have been disproportionately affected by COVID-19. Their communities disproportionately affected. But unless you're a healthcare worker, or you work in a long-term care facility, you are not at the top of the list. Should you be? Well, we know that black and brown people are healthcare workers, right? We are those nurses, those uh, folks who are cleaning up in the emergency room, who are uh, at health centers across the, the state. So we know that those are the people we need to be healthy, especially as the vaccine won't have immediate benefits, right? We won't see that benefit of a vaccine until everyone, at least 70% of the population, is vaccinated. So we need the healthcare workers to be able to continue to be on the front lines of meeting the needs of people in the emergency room, at clinics, at health centers across the state. And we need our long-term care facility folks who are both uh, staff and the, the folks in those facilities uh, to be uh, treated early in this pandemic. But how about people of color who don't work in either a healthcare facility or long-term care facility who live in communities that have been hit incredibly hard. They don't get round one, it appears, do they? Well, it's still round one. It's just a matter of getting the health care providers. We need to respond to the illness first treated. And I think that makes perfect sense. And I think those in communities of color will acknowledge the need to do that. You know, I think about, and I'll use uh, a good friend of both of ours, Ayanna Presley's phrase. She says, I'm going I'm to I'm change it a little bit. Those closest to the pain need to be closest to the vaccination." And the reality is uh, the strategy that the Commonwealth will have, which will be approved by the governor very soon, will get those in the hands. And I think he said that in his press conference that you just showed. 
they're going, we're going to get those vaccines in the hands of communities of color, in the bodies of people in communities of color right away. Who else is going to be in that first round other than hospital uh, workers, healthcare workers, and people in long-term care facilities? Well, I think, you know, there'll be more details to come, and I don't want to sort of preempt that until the governor approves it. But I can say we're different than any other state. I think as we prove with, quite frankly, the policing bill that's before the governor right now, and so many other things, healthcare reform, we're going to do things a little differently in the Commonwealth. And I think one of the ways is we have to think broadly about congregate care facilities. I think our plan will think about those things differently, too. Uh, we're going to address the people with comorbidities. We know that people who have uh, comorbidities are most at risk of dying, and we'll target them right away. And then we'll target communities uh, as we identify them, Jim, as red communities, uh, communities where Brockton, Chelsea, Lawrence, Lynn, uh, we'll make sure that the vaccine gets to those communities early. And I think the governor stated that as well. Well, let me quote somebody since you did. I just don't know who said this, but I think a lot of people did. It's not the vaccine that's the solution. It's vaccinations. And you know that vaccine hesitancy is a real problem. There was a poll recently done by Western New England University polling uh, uh, of white uh, residents of the state, very or somewhat unlikely, only a third, even though I think that's too high, non-white residents of the state, almost six out of ten. What's to be done about that? Well, you know, I think it starts with just being honest, right? So if you're African-American and even Latino, but I'll just speak specifically African-American, you should not have this conversation without talking about the lack of diversity in clinical trials. Uh, You should not have this conversation with our communities without talking about uh, uh, doctor, uh, the the experimentation on black uh, slaves or the disparate treatment in our healthcare system dating back to slavery. Uh, or unequal treatment, the Institute of Medicine's 2002 report that says that uh-huh. patients are treated differently. Once you get all that historical context, then you say there's a vaccine coming and we're disparately impacting, we're dying at a higher rate, uh, and we have efficacy and safety here. And doctors who we trust, whether it's Fauci, whether it's uh, local doctors, are telling us that we need to get this vaccine so that we're not dying and suffering at a greater rate. And I think that's the message, and we need it to come from people that that communities trust. And is one of them Barack Obama? He said yesterday uh, that if he can do it on TV or have it filmed so people can see it when he gets the vaccine, he's willing to do it. And by the way, uh, George uh, Bush, uh, W. Bush, obviously, and Bill Clinton afterwards said they'd join him. Will that help? I think it'll help. But I think the person that people really want to hear from is their providers. I think, and Jim, this may be true for you as well, when you go to your next primary care visit, And they say, hey, have you taken your COVID-19 vaccine yet, whether it's Pfizer, Moderna, or AstraZeneca? Uh, And they tell you, Jim, I need you to take it. You're going to listen to your providers. So I think, yes, Barack Obama, uh, Mayor Walsh, uh, uh, Mayor Rivera, name the person, whoever they take it and and move some of the population. But we really need that, that push to come from our providers. I think uh, Charlie Baker said the other day that he expects the Jane Q and John Q citizen. I think he said that should all have access to the vaccine by the spring. Does that sound about right to you? I think everything I've heard both from the CDC and what I've heard from the COVID-19 vaccine working group is everything's moving quickly enough and, and the plans are coming in place. The systems are being put in place that I think we're looking at through the spring. We can get through everybody in all those categories and, and maybe some slips of a few weeks. Uh, But again, credit to Secretary Sutters and Health and Human Services, Governor Baker, Paul Bittinger, and the rest of that dynamic working group uh, and all the advocates who are out there like uh, Mass Public Health Association that are calling for us to do this the right way, an equitable way. I think we'll get there. Uh, Michael, thank you so much. And by the way, congratulations on your elevation to the lead guy at the Mass League. We uh, congratulate you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jim.